thank you, John, and uh, thank you to John and Anna for uh, for inviting me. Um, I'm very happy to be here in this um, in this conference and with this uh, uh, in this very interesting uh, context. Uh, okay, yes. So. Um, Um, I'm going to start with, um, this will be kind of an, uh, you, you said that, Bjorn, that, uh, that uh, hopefully we will have an answer to what uh, sound art is. And I think, yeah, we, we will get some, uh, some ideas about that uh, during the day. Um, and I will give some suggestions uh, about that too. But I will start with, uh, with uh, some contradictions, present some con contradictions. Uh, for my own uh, presentation. And uh, first of all, uh, this symposium is called Symposium on Art, Music and Radio, and not sound art. And uh, the question in the, main, uh, in the main text about the symposium uh, is what is the concept of sound art? It's already there. Is this, is this a conference on sound art or is it on art, music and radio? And my paper is called the Sound Art, Sounding Art, Art with Sound. And then I see now, um, here, in the, in, the pr in the program on the web, sound art, sonic art, it says. It doesn't say sound art, uh, sounding art. And sonic art is uh, sometimes considered as uh, something else, as uh, sounding art. Sonic art is uh, electroacoustic music. So they have another contradiction. So th this is a little bit uh, the way things uh, are with sound art. It's very... Uh, you use different terms and you mean different things, and uh, but sometimes in the end you kind of know where you stand and what you're talking about. Uh, with this, uh, I think it's a good starting point for me to uh, to begin with, uh, not presenting what is uh, absolutely uh, what's really sound art about. I will not speak about what is sound art. I will more speak about what. Um, uh, Sound in the uh, I will speak about sound in the arts, sound in the art uh, environments, sound-based practices, etc. <coughs> where sound is not necessarily considered music when you hear it, it's foremost not really music. It's more considered art. This will be my uh, entry into into this uh, uh, into uh, the conference today. And why 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 don't, don't I speak? Solely about sound art, and why do you speak about um, um, sounding arts? Uh, because I start with the practice. What do you see and hear when you go into a gallery or a museum, or uh, into uh, art in public space, or at a um, new music festival, etc.? You see a lot of sound art, you see a lot of contemporary music, and you see a lot of different ways of of uh, working with sound, which is not necessarily called sound art. So I'm starting from the practice and uh, try to see um, if we can find something common in the practice of working with sound today. So what I will do is I will basically give a few examples, five examples of sound in the arts. Um, and for each of these examples, I have a kind of a rubric, a kind of a title. And um, which is exemplifying how artists and institutions and practitioners are working with sound, um, regardless of what you actually call it, because that's not always so interesting, although it's interesting too. Um, so this overview takes as point of departure uh, some changes in uh, in the art world in. In general, during the last 50 or so years, during the last uh, half century, uh, so you could actually call it changes. But since it's been happening during such a long time, it's basically also part of the general art culture today. So uh, my fir first example of where you find sound is in the expanded concert context, as you can see there, and. Um, what is expanded concert context? Well, I, I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example of... Uh, take that away. Um, uh, 
This is the uh, Uruguayan composer and uh, sound artist uh, Osvaldo Boudon, and uh, it's an um, uh, it's an installation which also became a concert piece called the uh, Tabulaturas Especiales, and. Uh, what it's like. I, I slipped on my tongue and uh, said uh, tablaturas especiales, but it should be espaciales, uh, that is uh, spatial, not special. And um, yeah, so this was an installation with uh, containing um, 55 uh, guitars, acoustical guitars. And uh, what was happening here uh, was a concert. It was uh, performed a couple of times in that uh, gallery, in that space. Uh, where, as you can see, you had people, uh, well, guitarists, music musicians, playing on the, on the instruments. And not randomly, so there were scores, etc., for, uh, for this. Here you could see them mainly playing in relatively um, traditional ways, but they were also uh, moving around, stro uh, striking the, uh, the guitars, hitting them, and uh, playing with them in, uh, in many different ways, in a piece which lasted for about uh, one hour. So what you basically have here, you have, um, you have a, con a concert culture and a musical piece which is, uh, which is uh, taking place in an arts uh, environment. So you have a, an example of an expanding uh, concert uh, context in this uh, piece by Osvaldo Boudon. Now I see that uh, they want me to connect to the internet and I think that's a good idea because actually I'm not um, Connected already? Can I just? Uh, no, no. Yeah. Click there. I click there. Yeah. Moving on further, <coughs> uh, expanded concert uh, context was that expand expanded sculpture is another theme, and uh, within contemporary art is of course very and uh, and within a postmodern discourse it's of course very uh, important. Um, here there's an example from uh, Joanna Dudley, an Australian. Uh, artist and sound artist, and um, this is an installation called uh, Tom's Song. And what is happening here is that we have a sculpture which is uh, performing a piece. So you, you basically have now a sculpture which, which is becoming music and performing a piece with a clear beginning and a clear uh, end. And um, 
Let's see if we are online now. Anyway, the point with, uh, with uh, Joanna Dudley's installation, uh, it's in a box and it contains uh, a large number of, uh, of uh, musical boxes and, uh, and turntables, record players. And uh, they are uh, synchronized, so they basically play uh, the musical, the instrumental background at, like a core, um, an orchestra of several instruments to a song which this uh, Tom, which is an, the grandfather, I believe, of, uh, of the artist, is singing. So there you have an a sculpture which, which is expanding into a musical instrument, basically. So here it is. I'll play just a short sample in the beginning. There you have a, a sculpture um, doing a musical performance, basically. Uh, Joanna Dudley was that. Uh, the next uh, example uh, would be uh, what I call the institutional transgress. And it's basically um, uh, how uh, the art institutions and, uh, and the musical, musical institutions, etc., et are working across uh, genres, um, so to say. Um, and in this case, um, we have this uh, Florian Hecker, who is um, who comes from a musical background and uh, was part of the important uh, Viennese uh, electronic uh, music scene in early uh, around 2000, around the record company Mego. So it's a very musical, um, very musical uh, background. Uh, he is uh, very much today. Uh, associated to um, uh, within the art world, he has uh, performed and had uh, installations and musical performances in in uh, in Documenta and I believe also Ven Venice Biennale. I mean, these really important uh, institutions for inst for uh, contemporary art. And the interesting thing is that uh, what he is uh, exhibiting and what he is playing is uh, from my point of view, mainly music, but he's doing it in an art context. And this example here, Untitled, uh, from uh, 2013, is a three-channel uh, piece which was uh, installed in, uh, in uh, Kunsthalle Aarhus in, in Denmark. And uh, it looked like this.
in a way, it's a typical electroacoustical uh, piece of music. It's uh, uh, it's spatial. It's in uh, several channels, uh, like here, and it could basically be, be uh, installed anywhere. So in this sense, it's not site specific. Um, um, it's it's a it differs a little. It deviates a little bit from uh, the electrical. Um, uh, electroacoustical traditions by being uh, it's it's a generative uh, real-time uh, generative piece so it uh, basically has no beginning and no end and thus has um, some general traits and characteristics that's uh, uh, that, that simulates what's uh, what's the typical archetypical sound art pieces no beginning and no end which you very often can can read about but uh, he's interesting as uh, as an example of musical uh, composers who are uh, mainly to be uh, considered within the uh, within the contemporary art world context. And uh, we talked about uh, uh, yesterday and today about uh, the Lebanese uh, Paris-based uh, Tariq Atoui, uh, who also is uh, has a background in electroacoustic music, but is more and more uh, basically being performed within the art in the art context. This was at an exhibition in uh, Kunsthalle Aarhus, and uh, the, uh, the exhibition was called Systematics, and it was uh, had as a theme basically uh, information and overload of information and how to relate to this within the field of uh, contemporary arts and also within contemporary music, obviously. Uh, further, you have media arts. <coughs> I say media arts uh, with, an, uh, with a stress on the S, uh, not only media art, because uh, there are very different forms of media arts. And uh, an example here we have from uh, Nevin Aladag, who is, a, you could say that she's a video artist, basically, a German tur uh, Turkish video artist. Uh, who is working with uh, with music as well, but more as a, as an aspect in her in her uh, stories within her video uh, video pieces, like these sessions. Yeah, and th this was, I think it was the first uh, show at the Venice Biennale. Uh, I saw it in Oslo at, uh, 
uh, at a big uh, exhibition about, not about sound art, it was called, uh, it was about art, uh, I mean, no, it was about music in the arts. That was the, the theme of the, of the exhibition, and this was part, part of that one. Uh, further on, uh, conceptual arts, also with, uh, with uh, yeah, several kind of arts. And here uh, I will show you uh, the American artist and musician uh, and composer, Christine Nordeval, and um, her piece, uh, installation, Piano, Piano, Pianissimo, which uh, is an installation uh, based upon pianos, basically. A lot of pianos being uh, disposed in, an, in a space. And uh, for this installation, she also made uh, interviews with, with uh, families of the victims of uh, the dictatorship in Argentina in the 70s and 80s, uh, and collected information about what happened to, um, to these people and interviewed people. Um, she did also herself performances, voice performances, at the area of, uh, of a memorial site in Buenos Aires for this. And this was uh, erected at the Ultima Festival in, uh, in Oslo in 2013. And for the performance, I mean, like Osvaldo Boudon, she also did a performance here at the, in the installation. She was uh, playing live herself while a colleague of her was writing the name during uh, the exhibition time of all the 22,000 people, I believe, that they have found out about who was uh, murdered during uh, the re regime. You can see the pianos are, uh, they are the uh, resonance boxes, they are the speakers. appearance in that uh, in that film um, finally um, as a kind of transition to uh, to the continuation of the conference uh, I take as a rubric sound art and uh, and here I give an example of a, um, a very important sound artist and who has been one of these figures who has been uh, kind of defining for the, for the for the for the sound art scene, Bernard Leitner. And this is a piece, an installation called Cascade from 2006. And. Um, Sounds. And you can see the idea of the cascade is it's in a, it's in a semi public building, in an office building in, in Berlin. And what you have here is, um, is uh, loudspeakers and, uh, and, um, and par parables that are uh, directing the sounds. It's kind of going from upside and down. Uh, in the um, uh, way we have the stairs.
And what I would say is the difference between this piece and Florian Hecker earlier, which I, I wouldn't consider sound art, I would consider this sound art, is that this is very much installed for this place. It's, uh, it's uh, meticulously uh, articulating the space, and uh, depending on where you are, you can listen differently. And uh, while, while the, uh, the um, Florian Hecker piece uh, could basically be uh, be uh, performed uh, in any space, but this is uh, um, a space where the uh, the walls and uh, the way it's con constituted with its very material and the uh, the different dimensions is actually acting as the speaker. So you could basically not move this installation into another uh, into another area into another. Uh, to another place. And this is one of the uh, defining um, aspects on sound art and what is different the difference between sound art and music and, and sculpture and what makes it, uh, as some consider, a separate uh, genre uh, within the art. But uh, to conclude and just summarize, uh, sound art, sounding art or art with sound, well, it could be discussed further on the, um, uh, the today and tomorrow. Um, for instance, is uh, the these examples so that I have been playing are they considered supposed to be considered sound art or or sounding arts or works with sound uh, or not? Or is this a question that actually matters when it comes to the um, to the artic artistic practice and uh, and the artistic uh, curatorial practice? Um, I have, together with uh, my colleague Osa Shana, who will uh, join the panel um, soon, uh, we have uh, written an article about this, about uh, actually how sound has, has been defined. And if you're interested in that, you can uh, watch it here, have a look at it here. But I think that's, uh, that's basically it. Uh, is there supposed to be uh, some minutes for questions? I or think we will say those. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. For the panel. Yeah. Good. Then I'm, I'm finished.